Today we'll be answering the question, can you make a combination lock out of a magic button? Now if you don't know what a magic button is, then you're stupid. Just kidding, you're not stupid. But basically what a magic button is, you have this block floating in midair with a button on it, and there's nothing around this button at all, so this button shouldn't power anything, right? Well, no, not really. If you push this button, this lamp under it will get activated. And these are the two simplest designs right now, just an observer clock and a piston with a redstone block. And basically how these work, this block over here, when it's getting powered by the button, is budding this piston over here. So when this piston receives a block update, which is, with, which is what this observer clock is doing, it will power and it will activate whatever's around it. But obviously, it's kind of limited. If you just put a bunch of buttons here, they all activate the same piston. You can't really do much. You can't do things. You have five buttons here, but they only do one thing. So, like, how are we going to make a combination lock out of this? How is that even possible? Well, first, let me show you a really cool concept that was made by Pikachu with a Y, not with an I. So, let's go look at that first. So this is the concept that Pikachu made, and basically what it is, we have this one block here with a bunch of buttons surrounding it, but each button activates a different output, so we have top, back, right, left, and front. So if we activate the top button, the top lamp will activate. If we activate the front button, the front one will activate. If we activate left, that one activates. We activate right, that one activates, and we activate back this one activates. You may be wondering, how is that even possible? They're all activating the same block. How can it go into five different outputs? And the, yeah, here's the redstone. Basically, it kind of works the same as the magic button, but not really. So we have five different pistons here. We have one over here and four more over here. And each one on each button on the side activates its own piston because it buds. So if we just activate this, this piston activates, we activate this button, this piston activates, we activate this button over here, this piston activates, and this one will activate the fourth piston. But you also may realize that whenever we activate a button from the side, two pistons get activated. So that means two outputs are being taken out, but we only get one lamp. So this is basically how it works when we push a button on the side. It will take the signal into this long line over here, and that long line um, comes from the middle button, so the one on the top, and it basically keeps this torch off. So if we push the top button over here, this redstone line will turn off. But if we push anything from the side, it will stay on. So let's look at that. It stays on because the pulse is going through this redstone line, not letting this torch to be turned on, activating the lamp. So then I was wondering, I wonder if you can make this sort of thing in magic button form. Also, this person made a too high design. Completely different concept, but we're not going to get into that today. But anyways, we want to make a magic button version out of this. So you may be wondering, is that even possible? Can you do the same thing from one block above this? Well, actually, you can, so let's go look at that design. So I present to you the magic, magic button. So we have five different buttons on this lamp here, and each one goes to each one of these lamps. So if we activate the top one, the top one activates over there. If we activate the one on the right, the one on the right gets activated. We activate the one on the left, the one on the left gets activated, the one on the back, the back gets activated, and the one in the front and the front gets activated. So yes, it is possible to do it with a magic button. And also Pikachu came ov over with a Y, remember, with a Y, and he made and uh, this plus kind of output system. So basically each button corresponds to a spot. So the top button is the center lamp. The right button is the one on the right. So it's a bit easier to see what's going on. And the redstone is this thing over here. So it is pretty small, in my opinion, for what it does. And basically how it works is we have a normal magic button going through the center. And beside it, we have four pistons like this in a cross pattern. So the way that this magic button works, it looks a little bit different to the ones over there. Our observer clock is still over here. We have two observers going back and forth. And our sticky piston is facing downwards in the center. And it's still getting updated. So when it activates, it pushes this entire column down activating this piece of redstone, this repeater, and it will go into this block, 
um, and into this note block, and this piston will push it back up, so we get something like this. The whole pillar goes down, and it goes back up, and that's how this new magic button works. And that output goes into this repeater, these repeaters over here, this one tick and this four tick. The reason we have this four tick is so it doesn't give like a spazzy input output, it gives like one pulse. And that goes into this lamp. But this block has a piston over here. So whenever we activate one of these on the side, which also get updated because of the magic button, it will go into this line over here, into this four tick repeater with a redstone block over here and that will go into this sticky piston and that will keep it from getting this powered so it'll extend its block this can't go through and then it will retract after a long time that's why we have these extra repeater timings over here so yeah that's basically how the magic button version of this button block works but now we have some outputs to work with, so that means we could probably make a combination lock out of it. And guess what? I did that, because otherwise the video would be really short, so let's go look at it. So this is the magic button combination lock. Over here we got our magic buttons all on this one block, and we have the combination over here, which is back top left, back front right. And it is order sensitive, so that's a cool thing also. And let's just enter the combination to prove that it works. So we have the back one and then the top one, and then left, and then back, and then front again, well, front once, and then right, and we will get a firework coming from the ground if we did it right, and that's what happened here, we got the combination right, and that's what happens. But if we type in a combination that is wrong, then it will not work, so if we just go back over here, so we go back, we go top, we go left, but then we go top again, and then we just enter this, and then that. It won't do anything. It won't get the combination right because we got it wrong, so yeah, that's not good. So yeah, this thing does have a fail safe. If you get it wrong, it won't activate over here, and this is the redstone to it. It is pretty big. And yeah, there's a lot going on here, so let me just reset a few of the circuits over here. Now, there isn't a reset button itself, so you can't really tell when it resets. You kind of have to know the combination, and if you get it wrong, well, yeah. So yeah, you can easily get a reset button over here. It's not that hard, but I didn't put a reset button. So yeah, this blue circuit is the one we just looked at over here. It is the magic button circuit. And then we have like an extra thing on the side with a torch tower. So the output for the bottom, which is the top button, we just have a little torch tower up here that brings it to the same level as all the other inputs. So it's this block over here. And this red circuit is the combination lock. It's one of those old school combination locks. So this is basically how it works. I showed how this works in the lectern video, but in case you don't know, so the signal will go all the way through, it'll go and it'll hit the first one, it'll raise this piston, and it'll stay up, and if you get all of them right, like this, then you get the code right, and it will reset itself and activate whatever. And how it works is this redstone will bud this block, and that will update the piston and keep it extended. And yeah, that's basically the combination lock, but this doesn't have a built-in failsafe, so we had to built a custom one over here and that is this yellow circuit and basically what this yellow circuit is is a counter so over here we have seven items which is two more things well it's two more than the amount of codes in our combination actually no it's one more so one two three four five six and that is in case the top button pulses twice because this runs on like a inconsistent clock so sometimes it does pulse twice so we just have that extra item to make sure it doesn't like break anything. So how this works is when we push this button six times, all of the, okay, never mind, it is seven. Doesn't matter, two more times, it's for the checking this. So when all of these items go into this dropper over here, this comparator will turn off and that will go all the way into here and it will reset it. But this also has to reset itself. So the way we do that is we have this little auto dropper kind of thing over here 
But if we push a button, as you can see, this piston isn't activating because we have an extended piston here and a piston here to update this piston. So when we have all of the items in this dropper, so four more times, so one and two, three. Then the fourth time we activate it, this comparator will turn off, sending an update through these observers into this piston. And these two pistons will retract. This piston will extend and it will automatically dispense all the items back into the first dropper. And then once this piston goes down, these pistons extend again. And the reason it doesn't extend while it's doing it is because we have this piece of obsidian here. So let's just look at that happening. So there we go, that happens. And then it resets. And yeah, all of our items are now in the first dropper. So yeah, that is the combination lock made out of a magic button. I'm not gonna do a tutorial in this video because it's pretty long already. But if you do want a tutorial on the magic button, combination lock tell me because it is a really cool concept and yeah you could have infinite amounts of numbers in your combination lock so you can this is expandable infinitely whatever you want so yeah i hope you enjoyed this cool concept on this magic button combination lock and maybe i'll come up with cool things also so yeah uh that's the video okay subscribe to pewdiepie i want to be monetized but i know i won't goodbye